To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's Phil's talking a little bit about uh, private lending and I was actually pretty uniquely qualified to, to borrow money privately in that when I started this business, it was just after, I guess it was 2001, I quit my full-time job without ever buying real estate to become a full-time investor without ever having done it before at all. I was getting so close to buying deals, so close, so close, so close. I said, you know what, if I had more time, I'll just quit my job, I'll have time to go do research at the courthouse and things like that. And I don't recommend people do it that way, but that's the way I did it. And uh, when you quit your job, and you find a good deal, it's pretty tough to go to a bank and say, hey, I'm a guy with no job, <laughs> lend me money. But when you go to a private investor, these are asset-based loans. So you go to a private investor and say, hey, I have a $100,000 house that I can get for 50 grand. They go, huh? <laughs> tell me about it, tell me more. So, uh, so I use private investors from right from the start. And we also use uh, seller financing. And by seller financing, I have a number of deals, I mean, geez, when I first started out, the first first thing I want to do is get an office. So in order to get an office, I had one criteria. The office had to be free. So in other words, I was looking for a multi-unit building that I could have an office in one part and rent out the rest of it and have all the other rents pay for my office. So, uh, so I found properties that were free and clear, multi-units, and I said, look, if, if you'll just let me pay you you know, whatever it is, a thousand dollars a month. You you want a hundred thousand for your property? How about I give you a thousand a month for um, for a hundred uh, for a hundred months? It's a hundred thousand dollars. So that, that's that's the kind of deals that I would strike to do uh, owner financing. And like Phil says, you're really in sales because you have to sell your ability to do that. And um, it was a great start for me because I I ended up getting a, a nice place to have as my office. The, the rent from one side paid for the entire place. I got my office office for free. I still own that property today. It's a little, re, a couple little retail stores in Half Row, Pennsylvania, and uh, I moved out of it to the office that Phil showed you up there. But uh, I still rent, I still rent that out, and I have both sides rented. And geez, it's uh, 2015 now, so I made a deal with a guy to buy it for $634.62 a month for 13 years. And I bought it in 2002. I think I have like six months left on that, and the, and the things paid off. And all that, I didn't pay a dime of my own. In fact, when I made the deal with the guy, I told him, look, for me to buy this place and fix it up, I'm not gonna have a tenant for a while. I need to do repairs, I need to market the place. So why don't we just make my first payment due to you six months from the day we close? And then I'll start making payments for 13 years. This way it'll give me time to get it all rented. This doesn't make sense for me to have outgo if I don't have the income. So just give me some time to make the income. And I didn't know what that was called back then, but now it would be called moratorium of payments. So there's a moratorium of payments for the first six months. Um, that was a neat little strategy because I actually got got the place fixed up. I did a lot of it myself, just sweat equity because I didn't have the cash to put in it. And uh, it worked out well. Got the place rented. I got the new tenant in there and the new tenant was paying $800 a month. That covered my uh, 634 a month plus a little bit of utilities, which they paid half the utilities anyway. So uh, that was a nice little, little seller financing deal.